Okay, what's up everybody? This is Ellie Director back with a brand new video. So today I'm recording this live from my house. And uh, I just wanted to give you guys some insights on the power of consumer knowledge and exercising your rights, why it's important to do that. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, actually right here with my cat. He's uh, looking at my, looking at me here. Yeah, so. The goal here today of this very presentation is to give you guys some knowledge, insights on consumer rights, why it's important that you exercise it, um, and, and knowing how to use you know, arbitrary information uh, to put yourself in a better financial situation, better condition. One of the biggest keys and goals, I think, uh, when it comes to credit, when it comes to evaluation, is kind of knowing what's going to happen, what the outcome you're, you're aiming for, and how you're going to achieve those outcomes. Now, unfortunately, a lot of you guys... Uh, you know, are, are looking for situations and solutions to kind of do a quick fix and you're looking to find a situation to kind of, you know, work around uh, a shortcut or is trying to, you know, find some bigger situations where you can extension, you know, increase your credit score the fastest way possible, even if it means it costs you a couple thousand dollars, a couple hundred dollars. Now, I agree that to a certain extent, that's, that's, that's okay, but you have to be careful. You have to be very uh, goal oriented when it comes to credit. Now, a lot of people understand, hey, when I'm fixing my credit, I'm essentially only looking at, you know, three things like Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Although that's true, there are other things that you have to be careful with. Uh, one of the biggest things when it comes to fixing your credit is you have to look at also other national consumer data reports, right? Like LexisNexis. A lot of people ask, well, what does that LexisNexis have to do with anything? Well, typically speaking, in most of your credit reports, when you look at the top section, we have the public records and in that situation, uh, LexisNexis is the one that actually contains most, if not all, the information on your public records. Now, there are other instances where the government will use like CoreLogic or other uh, essential means uh, of service to, you know, data furnish that information across the three bureaus. And what ends up happening is in the situations like that, uh, you know, you have records of your information that's being shared with third party agencies and you have to actually keep an eye on those other reports as well. It's not just enough to look at your own personal credit reports and just go based off of that and say, well, this information is enough for me to dispute and take it off my reports. Most of the times what ends up happening is you will have those items come back. You know, They can fall back into your bureaus. They'll come back, uh, they'll affect you adversely. And then you probably wonder, hey, I, I disputed this information already in the past. How come it's coming back again? How come it's, it's happening again, right? So one of the biggest things that you have to be careful with when it comes to disputes and, of course, taking care of certain things is that you're actually touching every single of those consumer reporting agencies out there. It's not just about Equifax. It's not just about TransUnion or Experian. You have to touch, you know, let's say Innovis. You have to touch SageStream. You know, that's an information reporting bureau as well that actually publishes a lot of data about you. You have to look at LexisNexis. In fact, if you go to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and you write the list of number of consumer reports, they'll give you a list. I actually have a video as well that I've done a long time ago. Uh, after this is recorded, I actually put the description below. But what ends up happening is you can actually look at those bureaus and you can call them up and request a free report because once a year, you're entitled to one of those free reports. And the reason I say that you have to stay up to date with your consumer reports is because in the extensive way of living, when it comes to banking, finances, credit, even borrowing money for a home or renting an apartment, uh, you absolutely need to have access to those consumer reports and what information is out there about you that can potentially harm your ability to get a fair rent, your ability to get fair credit, your ability to get you know, financing for your car, for, for a mortgage that you'd be spending an extra, you know, on the overall outcome, you know, possibly over $100,000 in extra fees collectively in a period of 25 to 30 years just because your credit reports are not essentially up to date or just because there are certain other derogatory information uh, that's out there with other you know reporting agencies that you're not really familiar with. Now, I'm not saying to go out there and study every single one of them and memorize them and be familiar with every single one of them and how to take care of certain items. I'm saying, you know, have access to those reports. At least you have it for free, so why not check? Once you have those details, you can actually go and question them. You can call them up, you know, do a Q&A with some of your agents they have customer service numbers and ask them, hey, where did you collect this data? And kind of understand the intricacy of how these systems are interconnected all together to complete your consumer profile, right? To complete you as an individual who's going out there to borrow financing, you as an individual out there who's looking to, you know, become a tenant in one of those apartment buildings or let's say condos, you as a consumer who's looking to go get a car, 
to get financing or let alone if you're going to apply for insurance. All these little things and details matter. And I think that it's about time that you guys actually go out there and take your take the initiative to go out and, and obtain those reports. Uh, take the initiative to go out there and basically collect all the details and data that you possibly can. Because at the end of the day, right, what's going to happen is you have to look at credit and, and the, the journey to financial prosperity as a whole picture. You can't look at it as something half or, or partial. Uh, it's not going to serve you justice, right? If you're looking to, let's say, a lot of people... You know, I predict quite a bit of things. You know, a lot of people are throwing, you know, these primary trade lines out there and stuff like that. And a lot of people will see a lot of different opinions and, and have their own uh, professional taste on that. But here's the thing. Ultimately, what ends up happening, right, is every time I explain something to you, I explain some things that are compliant. Listen, you can do all these type of things. You can try for the shortcuts, but don't ask me to go and endorse them. If they work, they work good for you. But how long will they work for it? that? I don't know. There's no certainty to that. Nobody can guarantee those type of outcomes, especially deceit, right? Now, I don't want to go into this, you know, uh, Title 18 of the United States Code. It's all about criminal activities and all these type of things, including uh, conspiracy to commit a crime or uh, to, to, to lie, to defraud the financial systems, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we're here to talk about consumer outcomes. We're here to protect you as a consumer with your rights so that you can exercise whatever is necessary to get equal opportunity to financing, to getting mortgage, to getting, you know, let's say a car loan, to being able to rent in a fair way, to be able to get the right amount of insurance that you need for you and your family for financial prosperity and the reason for transitioning your wealth. So all these type of situations can only happen is if you as a consumer are fully aware of what's out there and what is reporting on you. If you're not aware, then you have to take time, especially a few minutes of your time, to call these reporting agencies outside of the three that we discussed, outside of Equifax, outside of Experian and TransUnion, and you have to take initiative to give them a call, obtain the free reports that you're entitled to, look through them, pick up the phone, ask them some questions if you're not sure. And the last and the worst thing that can potentially happen from all of this, from you taking action, is that you're not more knowledgeable about you as a consumer and how your profile looks out there to the world, especially these institutions that are making you know decisions about what you're worth or what you're able to borrow or what they feel like extending to you, right? You have the right to know that. That's a consumer right. So another thing that I want to emphasize strongly on is a lot of people come in and they try to look for shortcuts. They try to look for ways to kind of like, you know, break down their time. You know, one of the things that a lot of wealthy people do, okay, is the fact that they buy time. Now, it's not to say they look, I, I'm going to go out there and buy my trade lines, my primaries. No, they buy time based on the logical setting, right? Things that will not end up in trouble and make it worse than when it was initially, right? So let's say if you add some of these weird stuff in your profiles and all these type of things. And down the road, something goes wrong. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you get credit investigations across every single lender you've applied past that point. You know, some of these in individuals that I've been doing credit repair for have been contacting me and saying, Ali, I've been, you know, using primaries before. And now some of my accounts are being reviewed, like Chase, like Capital One, like Wells Fargo, like Citibank, you know, as bank. And then they're decreasing the credit lines on them. Do you know why? And of course, when it comes back to, let's say, fraudulent, you know, statements, you know, engineering your file to make it look like what it is, but it really isn't factually, especially with your credit history and your habits, uh, you know, you have to be careful. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot do shortcuts. By all means, I don't endorse them. You can. It's at your own peril. But my goal here is financial education for you. My goal is to give you the right way and the right tools and the systems that are necessary for you to get the most outcome out of all your consumer profiles, right? Whether it be on a personal credit level, insurance level, uh, whether it be as a tenant landlord situation, or even let's say when somebody's doing due diligence on you, what kind of information they can find, especially when it comes to public records, right? So there's a lot of digital footprints out there, but more importantly, there are a lot of things in databases that are contained in, and they contain information about you that you have to be fully aware of. And, and that is why I think it's important to exercise your rights as a consumer. You actually have to go out there and do your very best to collect the information that you can. Uh, also create a plan. You know, if you're looking to start your credit, Christmas is right around the corner, possibly New Year, and then you have Valentine's Day right after that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to go and spend it on credit, but I'm saying that having some sort of credit and some margins with you in times of, like, those holidays and stuff like that is a very essential part of, you know, being financially savvy, right? Being uh, responsible, being the, the person that you can desire to be, especially without the financial stress and, and the, the worry about what you're going to have or what you're going to, you know, give back or whatnot, right? So... Think about starting your credit repair journey. You know, there is a lot of videos on my channel. Feel free to look through them. There's playlists I created for you guys. You can, you know, check out the playlists, um, you know, check out those videos. I'm, you know, asking you guys to pay for anything, but I definitely want you guys to commit your time at least, if not.
to learning the ways of doing it the right way. You know, I don't get anything off of teaching you guys this information. My only goal is to reach as much of you guys as possible to give you the right information and education so that you guys know, hey, at least the guy that I can actually ask questions about. And if there is business to be done in the future, then I'm more than open. My doors are always open for you guys. And you know that. But the goal is I want you guys to be informed. So when we're actually talking about business or doing things together, particularly when it comes to credit, then I don't have to go ahead and waste my time, your time, educating you all over again. Right. So that is why my channel exists. You know, the concept of bespoke financial mentoring is because every single situation is bespoke. It is unique. It's different. It's, it's got a different attribute. You as an individual, your person that may have certain needs that others don't. And others have certain needs that you don't. So that is why it's a bespoke financial mentoring concept, right? So once again, I hope that uh, you guys enjoyed this video. It is a very short video. Now it's going about 11 minutes now. I just wanted to shoot this here and, uh, you know, get you guys the information that you need as a Saturday. I haven't done these videos for a while. I believe it was time for me to get on, give you some, some you know, knowledge and information that you can use and apply out there. And I hope that you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your day. This is Alita Raftar coming to you live from Canada. And I'll see you guys next time. This is your mentor and guide. Bye for now.